I'm your host, Sean McKenzie. Thank you for joining me once again on my channel on data analytics and data engineering. In this episode, we're going to return to our Python playlist and we're going to look at pandas and how to do grouping of records uh, using pandas, uh, uh, the group by methods in data frames. And so uh, this is a, a feature or a method that can help you on your project uh, in order to summarize data uh, very quickly and easily. So without further ado, let's get to our pandas group by. So to start, I'm using this uh, access database that I've used for some other examples. And it includes uh, some climate change data, in particular uh, cereal yields uh, between uh, 1991 and, and I think 2011 is in the source data set, which you can get from the World Bank. I've converted it here for use in our little projects and uh, we're going to use that simple data set today. And so what I'll do first is I'll create a new file, a new Python file. I'm just using the default uh, idle shell uh, that comes with Python. I'm not using a notebook or anything. And uh, we're going to import PyODBC as uh, PyO and uh, Pandas as PD. We're going to use those two, uh, which I have installed on previous episodes, which you can check out if you do not have those libraries on your computer. And moving on, we can uh, give some feedback by saying getting data, and then I'll paste in my connection string uh, for the access database that we've been using. Um, and then we'll create our connection object by saying uh, CNN equals uh, pio.connect, and then we'll put our connection string as the argument. Uh, give a little more feedback just so we know what's happening. We'll say uh, selecting, and we'll create our SQL string. And, uh, and we'll say uh, uh, select a country, uh, decade, uh, yield year, and uh, yield um, amount, and uh, uh, from our serial uh, table, which we have in our database. Now, if you're keen and you want to uh, use this database for your uh, testing and, and uh, development, uh, of your own solutions or just following uh, this particular um, exercise. You, there will be some links in the description below for you to take a look at. Okay, so moving on, uh, once we've got our SQL string, we will create our data frame with the df equals pd.readsql, and then we'll put SQL in our connection as our two arguments, and then we'll close our connection. Make sure that you do that. Uh, before you start anything else. Once you've got your data out, it's always good practice to close your connections. And, uh, and then we can uh, sort of print our head and tail of our data frame just to see what we have. Uh, we'll just uh, hit an F5, we'll save it, and then we'll hit F5 uh, so that we can see the results of that. And we're seeing pretty much exactly what we want to see. Uh, there's the top and bottom of our uh, record set or our data frame there with Brazil on top and Sweden on the bottom with the fields just as we expected. And uh, so now we can go ahead and do some group by comparisons um, on some real data, which is nice. And um, so what we'll do first is uh, uh, we'll, we'll create a, uh, maybe we'll take out our um, yield year um, and we'll just select from our uh, original data set. I could have done that in the SQL, I suppose, but I'm just going to take country, decade, and yield amount uh, as my um, uh, the fields that I want from the data frame itself and uh, actually create a new data frame um, to hold our average. So the first example that I'll give is uh, let's do an average. So we can see that our uh, data frame for average is equal to data frame, and then we'll use dot group by and we'll put our country uh, name in there and uh, that'll give us uh, that'll show us how we can group by country and what the output looks like for that um, so we can add dot mean on the end of that and uh, that'll give us our average and uh, and it also puts it into a nice little data frame for us in case we want to use that data frame for something else so then we can just say print df.average and then we can save that and we can uh, hit F5 and run that. 
or I should say uh, print df underscore average. There we go. Okay, so when we hit F5, uh, looks like uh, we've got a small data set, which is just exactly what we wanted to see. And that's got Brazil, Canada, and Sweden with the uh, mean serial yield amounts. And uh, there's our average with our group by uh, using by country. And we can change that to use decade if we want, uh, which is another field, another uh, um, field which is categorical in our table there. And looking at our output, we have a similar ta little table there. Uh, with uh, decade one and two, and uh, that shows us exactly what we want to see the mean uh, for each decade. And we could also do it as a hierarchical um, data um, output. If we put in country and decade, you can see that uh, it will split it into Brazil, Canada, and Sweden with decade one and two for each, and uh, we can make it look a little bit nicer if we add a rounding. So we'll put round um, and then our data frame with a 1 as an argument and that'll give us a nice uh, output there with uh, country, decade, and uh, our amounts uh, sort of rounded to one decimal place. Okay so that works nicely for our averages or our mean um, our means. But uh, what if we want to do other types of summaries? And we can do those uh, just as easily as we did for, uh, for the mean. So for the next one, we'll do uh, df underscore max is equal to uh, df dot group by. And then we'll do the same thing. We'll use country as our, um, uh, uh, for, our <clears throat> for our group by this time. And, uh, and then we'll use dot max. Uh, which is going to give us the, the maximum over each group, uh, which is a nice handy, um, nice handy measure to summarize by. So just like in our previous example, we could go print uh, round and then df underscore max combo one, and that'll give us our maximum values for each of the categories. And so when I hit F5, uh, you can see that uh, it gives the maximum yield amount. And since you can do a maximum on the uh, text, <laughs> the uh, text field, it gives two because uh, T is greater than an O for one. And uh, so that one will keep all three categories. Moving on to our minimum, we can just change the uh, letters MAX to MIN in each of our uh, lines there and then save that and hit F5 and there's our minimums. So you can see Brazil, Canada and Sweden and just as we expected the decade and the yield amount are the minimum amounts uh, in each grouping um, which is what, exactly what we want to see. And if we wanted to sum our, our uh, amounts we can also do that and uh, <clears throat> we can sum change the words uh, min to sum there uh, in each of our examples on our line and then if we hit F5 there uh, we can uh, we can see that uh, this is going to add them all together and you'll see there's only two columns here uh, not three like in the other because you can't sum uh, a text field so it automatically takes care of that for you. Um, it knows to sum the, uh, the value that's in the, the, uh, the yield amount column we could find the first record uh, in, in the series or in the grouping uh, by changing it to uh, uh, first, uh, dot first, and if we hit F5, it does the same thing. You'll see that it grabs the first record in, the, in, each, of the, uh, uh, in each of the groupings, and we can also do the last record uh, by just typing in last, dot last, and uh, and we can do that for our uh, data data frame name as well and then hit F5 and uh, that is going to give us the last record in each one and as you can see that's exactly what we wanted to see and uh, this is uh, how you can do uh, groupings using the dot group by method uh, on your pandas data frames uh, in Python 
I hope you enjoyed today's episode on how to do uh, group by in uh, Python Pandas. Uh, if you like what you saw today, please make sure to give the video a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed yet and click on the bell when you see the bell so that you'll be notified of any new content that I put up. If you have any questions or comments about what you saw today, please make sure to put those in the comment section below and uh, I'll, be, I'll do my best in order to answer any questions that you might have. Have a great day, have a safe day, and I'll catch you next time.